Welcome back to the FT and NFL team preview series. I'm your host, Mike Randall on X at Randall Rand, and we are sponsored as always by Boom Fantasy, top choice for daily sports action. Boom Fantasy, most innovative games. Uh, they cater to casual and the hardcore fan. You can win up to 500 times your entry only at Boom Fantasy. Download it, App Store, Google Play. Use that promo code FTN to get a no sweat bonus up to $100. And today we go out to Arizona. Only person I talk to, Bo Brack here on X at Bo Brack, Arizona Cardinals reporter and host of the Phoenix Cardinals podcast for Phoenix Sports. He is fantastic. Incredible knowledge. Dropped by for a few seconds here to talk about the Cardinals. Bo, thanks for coming on. Let's start with the quarterback. Last year, different vibe coming into the year, of course, without Kyler Murray. This year, I assume you're going to tell me, refresh your McClellan's ready to go here to lead this Cardinals offense. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's Kyler Murray essentially entering his first true offseason with the new regime, right? They had the coaching change, new offensive scheme, Drew Petzing putting Kyler Murray under center for the first time in his career and asking him to do a few things that he's never had to do in his you know, career playing football, dating back to like the Pop Warner days, always been kind of in the shotgun. And this new uh, this new Cardinals coaching staff front office kind of providing the infrastructure for success for the Cardinals QB. And I think for the first time in a long time, he's poised uh, entering his prime years and entering that big gaudy extension that he signed a couple of years ago that he's going to break out. I think that he's got an opportunity barring, you know, staying healthy for the first time in a couple of seasons to put up some pretty big statistics that we saw in 2020 and 2021. And we're going to start here with the offense, assuming Kyler's ready to go. Let's turn to the backfield. James Conner, so underappreciated, Bo, with how much he produces. But now you have Trey Benson there. I'm curious, what do you see? What are you hearing about the touch share in the run game, in the passing game? Because from a fantasy perspective, James Conner's been one of the most reliable people. He's on the field. He's scoring points. Last year, my favorite one from him is everyone looked at best ball, Bo, and they looked at that matchup with the Cardinals at the Eagles and the Eagles run defense, and everyone avoided it. And lo and behold, Cardinals win and Connor Rams in, I think, four touchdowns. So talk about the running backs here for Arizona this year. Yeah, I mean, look, this this offense, even with Kyler Murray, even with Marvin Harrison Jr., a uh, ton of weapons, you know, Trey McBride, the tight end position, this is a team that wants to establish the run, and they have a lot of trust in James Connor, and that goes as far as James Connor can take you as far as his health. He inevitably misses games, right? He's never had a full season's worth of, of games played in his entire career. He's going to miss a couple games here and there. And I think that that's where the Trey Benson insurance comes. And of course, James Conner in a contract year at the age of 29. It's also, you know, their eye to, towards the future in the Florida State running back. But as far as Benson, like, I don't know if he's going to get, you know, really any touches that uh, that James Conner wouldn't get. Like, James, this is his offense. Like, Jonathan Gannon, their head coach, even though he's a defensive guy, he said he's the blueprint. And he went over 1,000 yards last season. He was up at the top of the league as far as explosive rushes. They love James Conner. I think they're going to run him as, as much as they can uh, before, you know, maybe he misses some time and then Trey Benson comes in to spell him and you get a, few, a glimpse of what the future is going to look like. But 2024 is not the year of Trey Benson. It remains James Conner. Benson, maybe 2025. Well, I can argue 2023 was the year of Trey McBride. Had his first <laughs> season in 2022, goes 106 targets, 81 receptions, 825 receiving yards, and the three touchdowns here. So let's turn to the receivers. Marvin Harrison Jr., incredible talent, incredible receiver, the lineage, the whole thing. Talk about the order. Is it really Marvin Harrison? I guess Bowman, old school guy. I don't yeah. know if the rookie can be the first target. Is it Trey? Is it him? And then how about some of these other receivers who we look at here? We've heard great things from Kyler Murray about Greg Dortch, of course. Yeah. Then there's Michael Wilson. You have Zay Jones. So sort out for us here the receiving touch share, the order for the receivers in the tight end. Man, it's a great question. It really is. And if I were to lean any direction, obviously you see the talents, uh, the full tape from Columbus you know, and, and Marvin Harrison Jr., fourth overall pick out of Ohio State, and he's undeniable. Like, I think he's going to eat his first season, but is he going to be as far as the top, the hierarchy, as far as the target share? I'm going to give you a little bit of a wild card here, but I think it might be Michael Wilson. I really do. Michael Wilson has he's developed a rapport with Kyler Murray throughout this offseason. At the end of the last season, you saw a start in that Philly game where Kyler Murray threw a pick six, and it was intended for Michael Wilson. And Wilson 
took accountability for that. And from there, their relationship grew. Michael Wilson, you saw him catch a two-point conversion, a touchdown. He had a nice yardage game in the finale against Seattle. And he's been working out with Kyler Murray the entire offseason. Of course, Sophia Smith, the talented you know, women's soccer player for Team USA, is Michael Wilson's fiance. He said, I ain't, I'm not coming up to Portland to hang out with you. I'm focused on my relationship with my quarterback first and foremost, risking it all to develop this relationship with Kyler Murray. So it might be Wilson at the Z position he's going to be your big play guy Marvin's going to be the X and I think he's going to get his opportunities and then Trey McBride and and I think that those are going to be the three targets in the passing game and then Greg Dortch will get whatever's left over in the slot and he's you know when you look at what he did at the end of last season and then like the the analytics that show his ability to get open I think that he could be a nice safety valve as Kyler goes through his progressions but I think it could be Wilson MHJ and then Trey yeah, that's great insight here because, you know, in the fantasy world, weeks 15 and 16, Michael Wilson sort of struggled there two consecutive games, no receptions, but then went right. four for 35 in the touchdown and then week 18, six for 95. So great insight as always. Uh, just a couple more here. Nick Rallis, let's talk about mm-hmm. him. Youngest coordinator in the NFL defensive scheme. How's it going to be? How do you think it's going to work out here? Because I will tell you the feeling coming in the last year, Bo, was everyone sort of down on Arizona. Right now, it's the total opposite. You know, they're healthy. They have weapons. They're getting better. They can be dangerous. San Francisco's got the worst rest advantage in their schedule that uh, they've seen maybe ever in terms of NFL schedule. So a lot of positivity here. Talk to us about defense. Yeah, the defense is it's the true kind of uh, question mark. I mean, the card, it could really kind of make or break you know, how far they can go this season. Could they go from a four-win team to a team seriously knocking on the door to the postseason as a wild card option? Uh, I think NFC West champion, you know, that that might be too much to ask, especially with where, you know, a couple teams in, ahead of them in the division as far as San Francisco, as you mentioned, and, and L.A. stand. Uh, but, you, you know, the defense, they're pretty much changing out half of the defensive personnel and they add Darius Robinson from Missouri at the back end of the first round, a versatile, violent defensive lineman who I think fits the scheme. What's he going to be able to do? Is he going to be able to be productive? This was a pass rush group that had one token sack against Justin Fields, who stepped out of bounds over the last six weeks of the season. You just didn't see any production from the pass rush, but they revamped their defensive line. Was it enough? That remains to be seen. And then you see, like, on the back end of this defense or the outside corner positions, is Sean Murphy bunting. The, the scheme seems to fit him. Can he be a kind of a – a game changer at the cornerback position where they struggled mightily last year. And then some young guys, Garrett Williams going into his second season and Max Melton second round pick out of Rutgers that people really like, but is he going to be able to contribute as a first year corner, which can be rough in this league? It's, it's going to be dependent on Rollis and Jonathan Gannon. Can they get these guys up to, up to you know speed in their scheme and with their play calls? So it, it, it's really going to be, can they do it? Are they going to be able to do it on the fly? Like this was a defense that had its moments last year. It was better than just giving up the second most points in the NFL. But are they going to be able to create the stops? Are they going to be able to create the the pressure and the turnovers necessary to complement this offense? Man, like I like the players, but they'd have to be on ahead of schedule to really kind of push to be like a top 20 defense. Yeah, listen, we we had a, a party over here at FTM with that win over Dallas because it was one of our biggest picks of the whole year. Right. So, yes, they showed flashes. People forget about that. Bo, great stuff as always. Last question, then I will get you out of here. Strength of schedule. Average per Vegas projected opponent win totals. But I did note here in my article that their strength of schedule in the non-conference is the sixth easiest Per any NFL team, you look at some non-conference matchups here. They have Minnesota away, Carolina away. Uh, they do have Miami and Buffalo, which are tricky. But the home yeah. matchups here, Bears, uh, Commanders, Patriots, Chargers, you know, some winnable games. There's talk about the SOS strength of schedule here as you head into a year where really the Cardinals are dark horse to make the playoffs. Yeah, and it was a brutal stretch to end the season last year when Kyler Murray kept, took one of the least talented rosters in the NFL against the tough schedule and essentially went 500. Like if Matt Prater makes one of two kicks at the end of the game against the Seahawks, Kyler Murray goes four and four in his return and and against some, you know, playoff teams, including, you know, the the Steelers and the Eagles. And I know that those were teams that struggled at the end of the season, but the Cardinals beat them. You look at this year, you know, it should be a fourth place schedule, but you've got some teams like Chicago. Everybody loves their off season. They add Caleb Williams. They add the, the talent as far as the passing attack. 
they should be a trendy direction. But if like the the start of the season is a murderer's row. You got a bunch of 2023 playoff teams. You got kind of a iffy gray area between like week six and ten. Like can the Jets and Aaron Rodgers or where are they going to be like in week ten? And then you've got an ability at the end of the season to stack some wins. Some teams that you mentioned. Minnesota, New England, Carolina, they should beat those teams. I think that they're going to be right around, you know, eight or nine wins, just depending on if they take care of business against the bad teams like the Pats, and then they win some games that nobody expects them to win within the division against the Rams or against the Niners, somebody that just didn't see it coming. Yeah, folks, you know who takes care of business always is Bo Brack for us here on X at Bo Brack, Arizona Cardinals reporter, host of the Phoenix Cardinals podcast and Phoenix Sports. Uh, Bo, we'd love to connect in August. It's right around the corner. We got July 4th coming, which means the NFL's ready to go. Can't wait for the season to get started. People very high in the Cardinals with good reason, Bo. Yeah, can't wait. The NFL Team Preview Series is sponsored by Boom Fantasy, your top choice for daily fantasy sports action. Boom Fantasy has the most innovative games that cater to both casual and hardcore fans. Win up to 500 times your entry only at Boom Fantasy. Download now on the App Store and Google Play. Use promo code FTN to get a no-sweat bonus up to $100.